so we'll get started so yesterday we were concentrating on the topic of angles right so we discussed about how to convert uh, the angles given a degree to the other unit that is radian so what was the formula degree divided by 180 is equal to the radian divided by this is the formula right so d stands for degree c stands for radian and we did a problem based on that also okay so just to recollect stuff so how do we define a radian as so how do we define radian can someone tell me how do you define radian it is defined as the ratio of what ratio of length of the arc to radius radius of the arc length of the arc to the radius of it radius of the arc so theta is equal to mathematically we write it as l divided by r where if you take an arc like this this is going to be the angle if i take this to be theta this length is going to be l and if the radius is r then l divided by r is what is called as the radian right so yesterday we discussed two problems on how to convert degrees to radians and radians to degree and i told you to so try few problems from exercise 3.1 did anyone try this these problems yes sir yes sir so we'll discuss yes, okay yeah we'll discuss it now before okay. that we will complete the examples and then proceed okay so let's look at example 3 that is given we have finished example 1 and example 2 so example 1 is based on converting the degrees to radian example 2 is from convert is, is based on converting radians to degrees Now what is example three all about? So let's see what it is. So let's read the question. If the radius of the circle in which the central angle of 60 degree intersects an arc, I'm repeating it. Find the radius of the circle in which a central angle of 60 degree intersects an arc of length 37.4 centimeter. The value of pi can be taken as 22 divided by 7. Okay. So let's try to visualize it diagrammatically. Example three. So, what is the page number? Page fifty-three. So, it is on page fifty-three. So, what are we going to do? Concentrate. So, you need to find the radius of the circle which intersects an arc of length. So, on that particular circle, there is an arc of length thirty-seven point four centimeter. from the end points of the arc if you join them to the center then the angle that the arc subtends at the center is 60 degrees that is what they have given okay we need to find the radius of it so we have the formula here that is theta is equal to l divided by r okay so what is the value of theta theta is 60 is equal to the length of the arc is 37.4 divided by r So R is equal to 37.4 divided by 60. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I right? Are you sure I'm right? I made a mistake. So the angle is in degrees. We need to convert to radian. That that is what I was waiting for. See, this formula theta is equal to L by R can be applied only when it is in terms of radians. Then why has he given pi the question? The angle given here is in terms of degrees. You need to first convert it to radians, no? So please be careful. Don't make this mistake. Theta is equal to L by R is applicable only when angle is in radian. Please have it in your mind. So instead of 60 degrees, what should I write? You know the degree conversion. For the sake of revising, I'll explain it. Degree. Good. That is pi by three. So degree divided by 180. 60 divided by 180 is equal to c divided by pi. It will be three. So c will be equal to pi by three. So what am I supposed to write? Here I need to write it as pi by three. So pi by three is what is. So R will be equal to 37.4 into three divided by pi. So that is 37.4 into three divided by 22 by seven. I am leaving the calculation part to you. So those many centimeter will be the answer. 
is the concept clear you understood what mistake you are not supposed to do yes sir so this is going to be the answer for the third example so i'm moving on to the fourth one so for calculations what you can do is you can leave some space if someone is coughing you can make a note of it so this is for your understanding So we'll go to the next problem. That is example four. So let's see what the question is. So the question says, the minute hand of a watch is one point five centimeter long. How far does it skip move in forty minutes? Okay. So how far does the skip move in forty minutes? So in sixty minutes, what is the angle covered by it? So let's try to visualize the question. Degrees. It is three sixty degrees. So you have a clock. You have a clock. So in the clock you have a minute hand. So he's asking, what is the distance? How how far does it stick move? Far means the distance covered by it means the arc length. Okay. Let's say. So it started here. It has to come and stop here. So, how much is this distance that it has covered? Is what they are trying to ask. If you want to visualize it. So, what is the radius of this? So, radius of this is 1.5 centimeter long. Okay. The time given is 40 minutes. In that 40 minutes, if you are able to find the angle that it has turned, right? How to find the angle? So, I am going to do it like this. For 60 degrees, angle covered is sorry, 60 minutes. Again, don't get confused. This sixty, this minute is different from the minute we discussed yesterday. Okay, the sixty minutes is real time. The minutes that is uh, observed in the clock. So for sixty minutes, the angle covered is three sixty degrees. So for forty minutes, what will be the angle covered by it? It will be forty divided by sixty into three sixty unitary method. So this and this will get cancelled, which implies it is going to be two by three into three sixty degrees. So that is going to be two hundred and forty degrees. Okay, it is going to cover an angle of 240 degrees. But if I want to find the length, if I want to find the distance, then I need the angle in terms of radian, right? So 240 degrees will be how many radians? So 240 divided by 180 is equal to the radian divided by pi, which implies radian is equal to 240 and 180 are divisible by six. So it is going to be 40. So zero and zero will get cancelled. So four divided by three. So C will be equal to four pi by three, right? Now you know the formula. Theta is equal to L divided by R. So L is going to be the length of the arc. So what is the value of theta? That is four pi by three is equal to the length of the arc is what you need to find divided by the radius. So what is going to be the radius? Radius is one point five centimeter. So I will suggest you to convert everything in terms of fraction. One point five can be written as three divided by two. Now, right, three divided by two centimeter, which implies L will be equal to four pi by three into three pi by two. So three and three will get cancelled. Two and four. Okay, five root one root five into three divided by two. So three and three will get cancelled. So L will be equal to two pi centimeter. So two into pi three point one four. Answer is six point two eight centimeter. So that is the distance covered by it. Just a minute. So two pi. So L will be which implies L is equal to six point two eight centimeter. Sir, radius. Sir, radius. Radian, sir. Yes, theta is radian, sir. Ah, theta should be taken in radian only. Wherever, see, wherever you need arc length and radius, the angle should be in terms of radian. 
Okay. Suppose you make this mistake, you lose marks. Suppose you write 240 and uh, try to solve it, you will get wrong answer. Okay, you should always convert this 240 degrees to radius and then apply this formula. Clear? Okay. So if someone is copying, copy it. So make a note of all these points. Okay. Shall we go to the next one? The example five. So what does example five state? If the arcs of the same lengths, okay, there are two arcs of the same length in two circles, subtend angles 65 degrees and 110 degrees at the center, find the ratio of their radii. Radii is the plural of radius, right? So there are two arcs of the same length. Okay, there are two arcs of the same length. Now, for me to have more angle, I need to take the center closer. If I take the center here, this will be 110 degrees. If I take the angle, if I take the distance somewhere far, then this angle is going to be 65 degrees. You can visualize it. You are able to understand. So here, what is the point given? This arc length and this arc length are the same, but the radius is different. If I take the radius here as uh, R2, then the radius here is R1. Because 65 degrees come first, right? For some space, I drew it on the right hand side. But remember, this is the first diagram, this is the second diagram. So I'm clear with this. Now again, he's asking you the ratio of the radii. So R1 by R2 is equal to what is needed. So how to calculate it? Again, what is the relation that gives us, what is the mathematical equation that gives a relation between angle, length and radius? Theta is equal to L by R. Okay, so theta L by R. So theta 1 will be L by R1 and theta 2 will be L divided by R2. But what are the precaution we need to take? Theta should be in terms of radian. So conversion should take place. So what is the value of theta 1? So theta 1 is given as 110 degrees. Right. So 110 divided by 180 into pi will be equal to the radian. So how much is that angle? So which implies C is equal to Uh, how much is it? Eleven pi by eighteen. Can I write it like this? Eleven pi by eighteen. Yeah, eleven pi by eighteen radian. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Theta one is sixty-five degrees. I told you the order is reversed, right? So theta one is sixty-five degrees. So sixty-five degrees, if you try to convert it. Uh, 65 divided by 180 would be equal to C divided by 5, which implies 65 by 180 means it is divisible by um, 5. So 5 means 30 divided by 36 into 5 is equal to C. So theta 1 is nothing but 13 pi by 36 radian. Similarly, what is the value of theta 2? So theta 2 will be equal to 110 degrees. So 11 pi by 18, right? So, theta, uh, so when you try to solve this, you will get it as 11 pi by 18. So 110 divided by 18, 180 into pi is equal to C. So theta and theta will get cancelled. Pi with uh, C, the radian will be equal to. So 110 degrees will be equal to 11 pi divided by 18 radian. So this is the value of theta 2. So can I write, from this can I write C? From this can I write R1 is equal to L by theta 1. Similarly, from this can I write R2 is equal to L by theta 2. So R1 by R2. R1 by R2 will be equal to L by theta 1 divided by L by theta 2. So L and L will get cancelled. It will be theta 2 divided by theta 1. So what is the value of R1 by R2? So theta 2 is 11 pi by 18 divided by theta 1 is... 13 pi by 36. 
So this will cancel two times. Pi and pi is gone. So 22 divided by 30. So it does not have any units. So since it's a ratio, it is going to be 22 divided by 13. That's the required answer. So R1 by R2 is equal to simple. Right. I hope it is clear. So what you can do is this 3.1 exercise, you can try out the problems. I will clear all your doubts tomorrow. I will go to the next concept. Okay. So whatever problems we did are the similar problems with the number chain. Concept. So you can try them out. If you have any doubt, you can bring it to me. I'll, I'll clear all your doubts in the class tomorrow itself. Now I'm going to explain you about the different trigonometric functions that we have and how are they going to behave in different quadrants? Okay. So what are the different types of trigonometric functions we have and how are they going to behave in different quadrants? So in your 10th standard, what would have happened is you would have learned this trigonometric table, right? So when you have a trigonometric table, you will have the angles from where to where? 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. So 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. So you'll have the functions here, sine, cos, tan, it keeps on going like this. Or I will say the trigonometric ratios. I'm not using the word function. So sine 0 is 0, 0, half, 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2, and this is going to be 1. Similarly here, there was 1 root 3 by 2, 1 by root 2, half, and 0. Here it will be 0, 1 by root 3, 1, root 3, and infinity. It keeps on going like that you have for the other trigonometric functions. Now the question is, in your 10th grade, you learn from 0 to 90 degrees. Now, what we are going to do this year is we are going to learn beyond 90 degrees also. Okay, what is going to be the value of sine 120 degrees? What is going to be the value of sine 150 degrees, tan 150 degrees, cot 150 degrees? So, all those angles, if you try to relate those angles to the coordinate geometry, then you can introduce the concept of quadrants. Since your people already have an idea of what is a quadrant, we are going to discuss mainly about the sign of trigonometric functions in different quadrants. Okay. Similarly, you have, you last year you would have learned this thing, sine of 90 minus theta. If I ask you the answer for this, what will you say? Cos theta. Cos theta. Because cos sine theta. and cos are, sine and cos are the complementary of each other. Can someone tell me why it is so? Who told you that sine 90 minus theta should be cos theta? We don't know, right? There is a formula that said we are following it. Well, I guess it's because uh, in a mm -hmm. right angle triangle, the, mm -hmm. angle, the angles other than the right angle will be complementary. Okay, so okay. I'm, I'm able to understand so what you're saying. So, this says so theta, then this will be 90 minus theta. So, if we... Uh, no. Mm -hmm. So if we take 90 minus theta as the angle and calculate all the functions, then they will be complementary. Complement. Very good. So if suppose I take this triangle, if I ask you what is sine theta, sine theta with respect to theta, B is adjacent. Right? Sorry, B is opposite. Sine theta is defined as opposite divided by hypotenuse. That is why we are writing it as B divided by C. Whereas, if I put a question like this, what is cos of 90 minus theta? So, with respect to 90 minus theta, if you want to define cos, cos is going to be the adjacent side of the triangle. So, cos is adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. For 90 minus theta, what is going to be the adjacent side? B. B. It is B, B by C. So, right hand side, if you observe B by C, here also B by C. So, left hand sides are supposed to be sin theta and cos of 90 minus theta. Okay. So, this year what we will do is we will have a different interpretation to it. That's it. Okay. Instead of writing 90 minus theta, you will write it as pi by 2 minus theta and all those things and proceed. Okay. So, let me explain the concept. Just give me a minute.
So let's see what are the signs of the trigonometric function. So you can write down, write the heading as signs of trigonometric functions. Now I'll be introducing two angles. So before I proceed, I just want to get one clarification. Did you people understand which direction of angle measurement is positive and which angle is negative? So which side the angle measured is positive? Anti-clockwise. When you measure something in the counterclockwise direction, the angle measured is supposed to be positive. Positive. So science of trigonometric function. Let's see how to deal with the quadrants concept. So when you take when you take a coordinate system like this, okay. So this is going to be x-axis. This is y-axis. So this is negative x-axis. This is negative y-axis. Now what I'm going to do is I'll take a point P here, which is having the coordinate x come out. Here, okay. From this, if I drop a perpendicular, what is this distance going to be? Coordinate. X coordinate. So what, what is the distance? It is x. The distance is x. That's it. So this distance is going to be y. From O to the point P, if I join this, then how much is this distance OP? It's going to be root of y squared root of x square plus y square. If suppose I take this angle to be theta, okay, I'm taking this angle to be theta, then what is sine theta? I'm talking about the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, what is the value of sine theta? Sine theta is equal to? y by root of y, y, by, y by root of x square plus y square. Very good. What is cos theta? X by root of x square plus y square. X by root of x square plus y square. Similarly, what is tan theta? Y by x. Y by x. Similarly, you can get cosecant theta and all those things. So that is root of x square plus y square divided by y. Secant theta will be root of x square plus y square divided by x. And cot theta is going obviously going to be x divided by y. Now, when I talk about the coordinates in first quadrant, coordinates in quadrant 1, what happens? x is positive and y is positive. Can I say this? Both are positive, right, in the first quadrant. Since sine theta is equal to y divided by root of x square plus y square, can I say it like this? y is a positive value. So greater than 0 means positive. So if you're not comfortable with this, I'll write it like this. X is positive and Y is also positive. Okay, but get used to this. X is greater than 0 is positive. Y is greater than 0 is also positive. So Y is positive divided by root of X square plus Y square is going to be a positive value. So positive divided by positive, what is it going to be? So sine theta is it going to be positive. The meaning of this is... When you substitute any value of theta, so when the act, when when certain when the point is in the first quadrant, if you join that point from the origin, what is the least angle it can generate in the first quadrant? What is the maximum angle it can generate in the first quadrant? Least is zero. Zero. Degree. Zero degree, and maximum is ninety degree. Least is zero degrees, right? So theta, you write it like this. Theta least will be 0 degrees and theta max will be 90 degrees. Okay. If suppose I want to write it in terms of radian, so theta least will be 0 and theta max will be equal to 90 degrees is how many radian? 90 by 180 is equal to C five divided by 5. 5 by five 2 by radian. So 5 by 2 is going to be the answer. Right. So when so what we can conclude from here is, if you substitute any value between 0 to 90 degrees inside a sine trigonometric value, that is uh, sine ratio, then 
the output value will be positive. That is why when you learnt all the values last year, you substituted all the values between 0 to 90 degrees. Means you were roaming in which quadrant? First quadrant. You were the there in the quadrant. first quadrant. So in the first quadrant, sign always gives you a positive value. That is why you see nowhere there is a negative sign. Am I clear with this? So there is nothing like minus of minus 1 by root to something. Everything is positive. Okay. So in the first quadrant, sign is going to be positive. Using the same logic, you people tell me what will happen to cos. So cos is x divided by root of x square plus y square. Is it going to be positive or negative? Again, the same logic. Positive. It is going to be positive only. Positive by positive. So, very good. So cos is also positive. So what again? So I will put it like this. If cos is positive and sine is positive, what can you say about tan? Positive. positive. Because tan is sine theta by cos theta. Positive by positive. This is also going to be greater than zero. So if sine, cos and tan are positive, the remaining trigonometric functions will also be positive. positive. Right. So that is why if you see when the value of theta, when value of theta is between 0 to 90 degrees or 0 to pi by 2 radian, all trigonometric functions, okay, or else I will use the word all trigonometric ratios. So going forward, you will use the word functions, all trigonometric ratios are positive. I hope this thing is clear. Right? Is there anyone having a confusion in this? Or you feel something? Perfect. You can proceed. Sir, in the exam, will they ask us to prove this? No, they will not ask you to prove. But what will happen is in the exam, uh, you will not be given these values. Uh, I'm getting really sound actually. Can, can you all put in mute? One minute. Uh, now, whosoever asked the question, please unmute yourself and ask. Sir, so. Mithun, yeah. Sir, they ask, uh, uh, no, they will not ask, but they will say sine theta. See, I'll show you a question itself, okay? Uh, so, let's see the exercise problem. See, if you're, you are able to see this problem, cortex is equal to minus 5 by 12, lies in the second quadrant. Then what are the values of the other trigonometric ratios? Means cortex is negative in the second quadrant. That is what this question at least is trying to tell us. Means in the other five trigonometric ratios, you need to know which trigonometric ratios are going to be positive and which one will be negative. For that, you need to understand this logic. Okay, there is a reason why I am explaining it. You able to get it? So if you have, so if you need to solve the problems, you need to know this. Okay. See, don't get scared. If you do the second logic, you will understand it easily. Nothing so tough in this. It's very easy. Okay. Now see. If I take a point in the second quadrant. I am taking the same point P in the second quadrant. If I take a point P in the second quadrant, which is exactly the mirror image of this. If this point is P x comma y, if I say it is a mirror image, how will it be? If this distance is x, then this distance will also be x. But how should I write the coordinate of this point as? Minus. minus it should write it as minus x comma y because it is belonging to the second quadrant. Right. From here, I am dropping a perpendicular. I am joining it to the point O. So, I am joining it to the point O. So, here observe, it is slightly a tricky part. What I am going to do is I will introduce two angles. Please be careful with this. Okay. So, I am introducing two angles. This is a line. Right. All the angles are measured with respect to the positive direction of x-axis. Means, if I am starting from here, I am using a red color marker, observe. If I start from here, if I turn in which direction will I be able to reach this point? So, what is the direction in which I am trying to turn? What is this direction named as? Anticlockwise direction. I am going to rotate in anticlockwise. So, anticlockwise direction of rotation is positive. Right. So, similarly, if I have if I have to reach this line, 
If I start from the negative x-axis, then in which direction should I rotate to reach this line? I need to rotate in the clockwise direction. So there are two, two ways of approaching this. Am I right? So there are two ways of approaching the same line from different perspectives. Right. If I try to turn in the anti-clockwise direction, then the angle this line is making with the x-axis, if I call it as theta, okay, is the value of theta acute or obtuse? Obtuse. Obtuse, right? So when theta is obtuse, then I am in the second quadrant. Can I say it like this? Right. So what is the least value of theta in the second quadrant? So theta least. Where does the what, what where does the uh, second quadrant actually start? Uh, at the ninety degree. Ninety degrees. So ninety. theta least is going to be ninety. Means the ending point of the first quadrant, the ending angle of the first quadrant will be the starting angle of the second quadrant. That is what I'm trying to say. So theta least is ninety, and theta maximum is how much? One ninety. 180. 180. 180. Very good. It is 180. So, any angle between 90 and 180 is going to be called as an obtuse angle. So, now we are going to see what will happen when you have obtuse angles present in the triangle. Okay? So, I will, I will explain this. So, this distance, if I take it as x, then this distance is going to be y. Okay? If this is theta, then how much is this angle going to be? 180 degree minus theta. It is going to be 180 minus theta. Can I call it like this? Right. Now I am asking a question. If I take the triangle A, P and O. I am drawing a separate diagram. Observe. If I take the angle. If I take A, P and O. This distance is x, this distance is y, there is root of x square plus y square. Are you able to understand this? Now, if I ask you, what is sine of 180 minus theta from this triangle? Mm -hmm. y by root of x square plus y square. That's right. Y by root of x square plus y square. So, cos of 180 minus theta? x by root of x by y square plus y square. x by root of x square plus y square. So, I'm going to write only till tan. So, tan of 180 minus theta is going to be y, y divided by x. I'll write these three. The remaining things you can find it out by yourself. If I ask you sine 180 minus theta, is it going to be positive or negative? What will you say? Mm. So, which quadrant is this? Second quadrant? So, in second quadrant, y is positive. Uh -huh. y is positive and x is negative. Positive, first one will be positive. Ah. So sine 180 minus theta, sine 180 minus theta will be positive. Sine will be positive. So, sorry, I didn't get you. Your voice is breaking. So, observe, sine 180 minus theta means positive divided by positive. That is, that is why it is positive. Okay. So, cos is going to be negative because x is negative and this is positive so negative by positive is going to be negative similarly what will happen to tan so tan 180 minus theta is also negative okay so in the second quadrant what are all positive second quadrant only, only sine and cosecant, sine and cosecant are positive it will be the inverse of sine. yeah Reciprocal. Don't use the word inverse. Use the word reciprocal because inverse has some other meaning in math. Uh -huh. Okay. So both only sine and cosecant are positive in second quadrant. I hope the logic is clear. Yes, sir. With a similar way, I am giving you five minutes time. Okay. I want you people to think and tell me what will be the trigonometric functions that will be positive in the third quadrant. Both x and y will be negative. So third quadrant, x is negative, y is negative. So if I take the same kind of a triangle. So both sine and cos will be negative. With this, that's right. And so if this is x, if this is y. If I take this to be theta, okay. If I take this to be theta, 
then this will be root of x square plus y square. So what is sin theta? Sin theta will be x divided by root of x square plus y square. Cos theta is equal to y divided by root of x square plus y square. And tan theta is y by x. Same y form everywhere. But only thing is you need to take these values into consideration, substitute and see. Yes. Others. Since both y and x will be negative, sin theta and tan. cos theta will be negative, tan negative. theta will be positive. That's it. Very good. That's it. So Meenakshi, now what you do is you think about fourth quadrant. Uh, if there is anyone who has not understood this, please let me so that I will try to explain it. In the... So I'm doing only two simple things. First thing, I'm taking the angle, I'm taking a right angle triangle, and then I'm writing all the trigonometric ratios in terms of x and y. I'm just seeing the sign of x and y in the quadrant and checking how is going to what is going to be the numerator and denominator sign. With that, I'm getting the answer. So it's except cos theta and secant theta, everything is negative. In which one you're talking about? Fourth. No, fourth how everything is negative. No. no, except cos theta and secant theta, everything will be negative. Uh, except cos theta and secant theta, everything will be negative. That's right. So third quadrant, what you can say is only tan theta and cot theta are positive. Okay. In the fourth quadrant, what happens is this part I'm leaving it to you. You can make an attempt. So x is greater than zero, that is x is positive, and y is negative. If this is the case, only cos theta and secant theta will be positive. Positive. Simple, as simple as that. So to put it in simple terms, first quadrant, everything is positive. Second quadrant, only sine and cosecant are positive. Third quadrant, tan and cot are positive, and in the fourth quadrant, cos and secant are positive. So if you want to know the answer for this, you have it here. So you have the answer, you have the table here, it is in page number 58. In page number 58, you have a table that is given, you can try to understand what it is. Okay. The concept of domain and range, I will speak after I explain the concept of functions. As of now, I don't want to speak about domain and range. And this concept is not going to affect you also with respect to solving the problems in this chapter. First, let's understand how the formula has come and play the basics. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is we will try to solve some example problems. Okay. So go to page number, if you have the soft copy, you can go to page 61, example 6. So if you see example 6, the question is, if cos x is equal to minus 3 by 5, so cos x is given as minus 3 by 5. You can solve this question only if they have mentioned x lies in which quadrant. So x is lying in third quadrant. So can you tell me what are all the quadrants in which cos is negative? Second, no, fourth quadrant it is second positive. And second and third quadrant. So here he has mentioned that it is in the third quadrant. You need to find the other trig other five trigonometric functions in the third quadrant. In third quadrant, what is positive? Tan, uh, tan and cot. Tan and cot are positive. Am I right? So if so, given information is given. Cos x is equal to minus three by five. So keeping this minus 3 by 5 aside, I'm drawing a right angle triangle. See, I'm not solving by the way he has solved. They have used a method of sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. I'm not solving in that method. I'm trying to explain a different method. Observe. If I take the base angle to be x, okay, forget about the minus sign as of now. Now, if cos is 3 by 5, where should I take 3 and where should I take 5? Perpendicular base. So base, should I take T as Sorry? Base is 3 and hypotenuse is 5. That's it. So base is 3, hypotenuse is 5. So you know that 3, 4 and 5 are Pythagorean triplets. So you will get this value as 4. Since cos x is equal to minus 3 by 5, so I will suggest your method. First write down all the trigonometric functions without their sign. Sin x is equal to 4 by 5. Okay. Tan x is equal to 4 by 3. 
cosecant x will be 5 by 4 cot x will be 3 by 4 then secant x will be equal to 5 by 3 okay i've written everything since cos x is negative secant will also be negative i'm putting a sign here only after i write all the values i'm putting it okay i'm showing it again I'll observe this 5 by 3 now i'm putting the sign secant x is negative since this is related to third quadrant sine is negative and cosecant is Cosine negative can. tan and cot are going to be positive this is how you convert them to other trigonometric ratios easy simple right Simple? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Can you try the next one? Example 7. So I'll show you the question. So example 7 it is like this. Cot x is equal to minus 5 by 12. Then x lies in second quadrant. Find the values of the other five trigonometric functions. Uh, tan x is uh, minus 12 by 5, mm -hmm. uh, sin x is uh, uh, 12 by 13, uh, cosecant uh, uh, x is uh, 13 by 12. Okay. And, uh, cos x is minus 5 by 13 and uh, secant x is minus 13 by 5. Very good. So you understood the concept, right? You did using the triangle only? Uh, yes, sir. So in the book, you can follow the book method also, but I would not suggest because uh, unnecessary application of identities and plus or minus, it will confuse you. So better go with the triangle, just finish the things in two steps. Okay. See, actually there is one more concept which I need to explain. I told you, right, the sine 90 minus theta, how you got, I'll explain it with the different logic. Since you understood sine 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta by drawing the triangle, there is a similar derivation for other conversions also. Till now, you have learned only 90 minus theta. There is a question like, right? what will happen if you have 90 plus theta? What will happen if you have 180 minus theta? What will happen if you have 180 plus theta? So these are all the concepts which need to be understood for you to solve the remaining part of this exercise. So, see, the, this will take a lot of time. Okay, This will take at least one class for us to understand. So what I would suggest you people to do today is, in exercise 3.1, complete the problems and in exercise 3.2 do the first five problems okay so this is going to be the homework for today so what I'll, uh, you have a feature so if, I, I hope everybody has downloaded the app you have the epsilon yeah. app in your app yes. okay so there is a feature in the app where if i upload an assignment you can upload your answers in it okay so two things to be noted, please make a note. I want you all to download uh, a software named Cam Scanner. So Cam Scanner is a software where you take photos and you can convert it to PDF. Okay. So what you can do for today is solve these problems. I will upload the assignment. You will get a notification in the app. Once you complete it, by tomorrow before 4 p.m., Upload all your answers there so that I can monitor. I will understand how your people are working on it. If there are any mistakes, no, I can correct it. Okay, so I want some cooperation from your side in this aspect. So I'm repeating it. The homework is going to be exercise 3.1 completely and exercise 3.2. And don't look at the solutions. You try it on your own from whatever we have discussed. Okay. It is because I don't want you to complete the homework for the sake of doing it. It is for to understand whether you have got the concept or not. If you want me to really help you, then don't copy any answer from any of the solution sheet by downloading it from the net. Try it on your own, even if it is wrong, no harm in it. Okay, I can understand where you're going wrong. So these two are going to be the homework for today. Okay, can I expect it by tomorrow 4 p.m.? Everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Even you simple work, nothing, nothing so complicated. Okay, 45 minutes to one hour is more than sufficient to complete it. Okay, so I'll wind up the session and uh, we will discuss the next part of this exercise tomorrow. Okay, see you all.
Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Yes, Bye. Thank you.